Okay. Welcome to the second session of Radio Merit Badge. Here we're finishing off some of the last few slides for your workbooks. And then we'll break out into a few different uh, sections. We'll have Dave over here with radios so you can get an on-air contact. Uh, I'll be over here signing off workbooks. And my dad will be showing off pictures of WWV and WWV8. No, not H. No, B. You did not go to Hawaii without me. I have not gone to Hawaii. <laughs> um, so yeah, we'll have those up after the slides. Um, so you can get most of the stuff signed off. Uh, a couple people today have already punched their ticket out of here and uh, gotten all the requirements signed off. So it is possible. OK, starting off here with transceivers. Uh, obviously, you're going to want different types of radios for different purposes. If you want something for your home station, you're going to want something with a bit more power. But with more capabilities and power, you're going to have a lot more weight. Like this guy in the bottom left here, that's a base station. It's going to be heavier, but will perform better than other radios you'll find. Um, this other one pictured is a mobile radio. This is the kind of radio that you would mount in your car or other uh, mobile sort of use. Uh, and then, like these that we have on the table, handy talkies or handheld transceivers. They're the most portable, but the general lowest power. Yes? No question. Okay. What can you do with radio? You can do a lot of things. Uh, a lot of people around here help out at uh, race events. These include trail races and uh, bike races, as well as boat races uh, up in uh, Horsetooth Reservoir by your, uh, near Fort Collins. Uh, what we do for those is we provide communications uh, to and from the uh, race managers and all of the aid stations around the course. So that's an application of radio. You can also uh, use radio to help out during emergencies. Uh, we all probably remember High Park Fire, uh, floods in 2013, a couple tornadoes recently, birthed um, Hereford, Hereford uh, further back to the Windsor tornado. Uh, a lot of those emergency slash disaster relief efforts were helped by the communication provided by amateur radio operators, specifically through an organization called ARIES, the Amateur Radio Emergency Services. Service or services? Service. Service. Um, more stuff that you can do with radio. Radio in space. You can talk to satellites. You can talk to the ISS. Uh, you can also with the, uh, the International Space Station. Oh. There is a station up there that they will talk to you if you uh, call and they have some free time. Um, additionally, with space. You can't talk to the Chinese ones because it crashed there last time. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, all you have to do is walk over and shout at it. Um, uh, you can bounce radio signals off the moon uh, with enough power. You can reflect the radio off the surface of the moon. And this can be useful, for example, if you're trying to talk to someone who is on the same side of the Earth as you. So if they can see the moon and you can see the moon, you can both reflect signals off the moon and effectively talk to each other. That sounds fun. It is. My sister actually did this for one of her science fairs a couple of years back. Um, Scientific balloons, uh, you launch balloons, weather balloons, with scientific equipment on them. And then as they're falling back to Earth, uh, we go into the field and be able to track them and pinpoint their landing location so that they can be recovered, as well as the data that they carry. Last time we covered DX, the, uh, we talked about how you can talk to people who are far away. 
Yes, that would be a DX station. Um, digital modes, combining radio and computers. This allows you to do a whole bunch of different sort of encoding and decoding modes for radio. Uh, summit on the air. Uh, Dave does this. Uh, you hike up to the top of a mountain and you plop down your radio and talk across the uh, country. Uh, speaking of weather, this is a picture of the uh, tornado near Berthoud. <coughs> oh, yep. So in amateur radio, there are three different licensing levels. As you go up the ranks, you have harder and harder licensing tests, but you also have more abilities, but also more responsibilities. Uh, you have technician which gives you most VHF and UHF capabilities, giving you uh, the ability to talk in your local area. General gives you most of the HF bands, which allow you to talk internationally. And then extra allows you uh, higher power on some bands, as well as filling in some gaps that, that the general license doesn't have. Uh, these tests are all administered by a team of volunteer examiners. These are people just like, well, not you and me, but you and me. You. I actually haven't passed the test yet. Yeah, not yet. Um, but they're just volunteers from the ham community. There's no high up government official that has to do these tests. Not anymore. So. Q signals. Uh, these aren't typically used on voice modes, but in CW they are very prolific. Can I talk to you about something? Yes. So for CW, because it is a mode that uses a series of tones for letters and not necessarily words like voice, you have a lot slower. Uh, communication if you spell out every word. So for, for some of these common terms and phrases there are a series of, of two or three letters that stand for this piece of communication. Uh, this is in your workbooks so I suggest writing a few of these down. Uh, CQ, calling any, and you can also specify CQ and then a country, county, state, etc. So if you were doing a contest and you wanted someone who was operating in Canada, you could just call CQ Canada and people would know that you're calling four stations in Canada. Uh, CW, continuous wave, also known as Morse code. Uh, DE is sort of a from tag saying um, this is who I am this is who is talking right now. Uh, DX, cover this long distance. SK, out, over, done with transmission. Uh, WX, abbreviation for weather. 73 is sort of a salutation, sort of best regards. Uh, and then we move into the Q signals. Uh, QRP indicates low power. QSL is a sort of a thumbs up from the receiving end saying yes I got you okay. QSO is another word for a conversation. QSY you say this to indicate that you are changing frequencies so instead of uh, keying out I'm changing to frequency and then the numbers you can say simply QSY and then the frequency. Uh, QTH, your location at that time. So for emergencies, you also want to increase speed of uh, conversation, obviously to help save lives. Uh, for voice, to indicate an emergency piece of information, you would say break, and then any station that's on frequency will acknowledge you and render any assistance that they can. Uh, for CW, you call out SOS. 
Three dots, three dashes, three dots. Yep. On the Morse code here. Um, do you guys remember from last time the first use of SOS signal? World War II, right? Earlier than Titanic. that. World War I. Oh, yeah, Titanic. The Titanic. Oh, yeah. 1912. So that was the first use of SOS as an emergency signal. Is that the last one? It is. So here we are on to the, the breakout sessions. Uh, Dave will try and raise someone on the radio here for you to talk to. We'll be over here signing off your workbooks. And we'll have some pictures of stations up on the board. This presentation was brought to you by the Northern Colorado Amateur Radio Club. For more information, visit our website, ncarc.net. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to like and subscribe.